Time for another episode on our 2008 Toyota Tundra. This time installing a front leveling kit from TRD Sparks and this giant gauge unit from Edge Products. As you can see, I'm wearing my sweet new Speed Academy hoodie. These things are selling like hotcakes. And the pouch is really good for holding Pete's uh, dollar store tape measure. Look at that, can you tell it's Pete's everybody? Made I gotta in... mark it because people keep stealing my stuff around the shop, you know? Made in China, only the best for Pete. <laughs> so, why the tape measure? Well, I'm gonna show you the difference in ride height from front to rear on this truck. It's kind of got that nose down look, which I, I assume is for payload and towing. So it levels out when you've got a lot of weight in the back of the truck, but it looks kind of goofy when there isn't a lot of load in the back. So we're gonna put those, put this, uh, they call it a leveling kit. It's basically a spacer that goes between the spring and the top hat, and it'll raise the front of the ride about an inch. This is an inch thick, so I'm gonna assume that'll translate into a, an inch of ride height. So quick measurement here. You see we're at three feet or 36 inches in the front. And out back. We're at 39 inches. So there's a three inch difference, which makes it look super tilted to the front. Raising it up an inch in the front should help cure that look a little bit. It's not gonna completely get rid of it, which is actually a good thing because like I said, you want some extra ride height in the back for when you're towing or when you're carrying a heavy load back there so that'll level the truck out. So we think it's just a matter of pulling the front shock assembly out, taking the top hat on, putting the spacer in, bolting it back together, putting it back in can't find any instructions online we're just gonna wing so it we're again on Pete. our own yep let's do it all right PT it's your time to shine I'm counting seven nuts and bolts here okay and we should be able to drop this spring out and I'm gonna start by disconnecting the sway bar end link because what we need to do here is make sure that we can get this lower control arm to swivel downwards when we need to push the shock out That's good. So we're not gonna be able to slide this out because there's tension on here right now. So I'm gonna grab a jack, yep. um, push the control arm up, and we should be able to just pull this out rather than try to strip the threads yeah, good as, we, as we gun it out. Look at that, like butter. Yeah. And I didn't wreck any threads. Nice work. Considering how much we bag on this truck for being rusty, the bolts aren't <laughs> too bad, are they? No, they're not actually. They're, there's a lot of surface rust by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Next up here is the lower shock bolt. Yeah. And it's actually a, a nut and a bolt here yep. that runs through the lower control arm. So I'm gonna start off by removing the nut on this side. I'm gonna crack it loose before I use the gun on it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's the sound of freedom of rust. Okay. That's what we call a steaming hot nut, everybody. Woo! I'm using a wrench here to kind of push on the back of the head so it'll slide out. Otherwise, it's just gonna spin on me. We've got four nuts up here holding the strut assembly to the actual chassis. So once we get those guys out, the whole shock and spring should be ready to remove. Yeah, I don't know if technically if this is a strut assembly or a shock and spring combo. I think a strut normally has bolts on it that hold the knuckle and the hub to the, sh to the strut or to the shock. So I think this is not a strut, not technically a McPherson strut, but I'm being pedantic and, and you're, wasting time. You're over my pay grade. I'm, I'm, I'm nerding out here. It's a shock and spring. I don't think it's a strut. Time to pull this little cotter pin and the castle nut for the upper ball joint here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. These usually aren't really tight, which no. is nice. So you can just, there you go. I'm loose. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this on sure, just a little the bit yep. while I hammer it. There's a nice flat surface here, which yep. I think is meant for exactly this. Yep. This is how you, get, you separate the ball joint there we go. 
We've got one 10 mil bolt that I'm gonna take out here just because when we loosen this and the whole entire assembly wants to come off, I know this line's gonna be super tight. So I'm gonna use a gun on it. You may be wondering why I'm using a gun. And the reason is I've tried on the other side to do this manually and it just bends the bracket. So the impact of the impact gun is gonna loosen this without bending the bracket. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, so this should now be ready to come apart. All right. Next step is to just pry the bottom of the shock out of its uh, mounting pocket here on the lower control arm. And that'll let the whole assembly drop out of the top mount. A bit easier if I was helping, but I got her. Now it's gonna completely want to fall out here. Yeah. So what we're gonna do? I'm pinching my fingers. There you go. Beauty. Here's a pro tip: don't use car spring compressors on a truck because. The spring is actually so much stiffer that they can barely handle it. It will compress, but as you can see, I've got four of these yeah. bad boys. And that seems like the only way to get this down. And it's not a matter of just holding the spring, compressing it just a little bit so it doesn't blow the top off. Uh, we need to put that one inch spacer into here. So this spring actually needs to be compressed quite a bit. Now it's time for reinforcements. You can see they're bending those rods already. Yep, time to bring in the the not so heavyweight hitters because yeah. these are like some of the worst spring compressors. Ah, there goes our compressor friend again. Shut up! As you can see, I've got uh, the janky spring compressors on here. I don't even want to touch this one. <laughs> Look at the angle on that oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, safety first, for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. That like I said, use a truck spring compressor, not a car one. Yeah. If not... you're doing this, don't be foolish like we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. There we go. That's some rusty hardware there. Oh, you know what? Pro tip number two here. I think... Uh, the way the top hat bolts onto the shock itself is supposed to be lined up. So you should mark this. Oh, like paint mark it? So yeah, it which on. we haven't done. And we'll have every intent to put it back together like that. Yeah, we can hope. <laughs> Let's take this all off. So as you can see, this uh, Tech Toy Spacer, which I sourced from TRD Sparks, the same place we got our fender flares. Um, it just kind of... Uh, mates up with the the oe top hat and usually it would mate up much easier if there wasn't so much rust yeah and this is uh, the one inch spacer as i mentioned earlier but you can also get it in a two inch or a three inch for the front then you can add a one inch in the back if you go with the three inch lift in the front to level it all out so lots of varieties of uh, leveling kits for these trucks and they're they're very inexpensive i think these cost around uh, 150 bucks or something so not a big amount of money to improve the aesthetics of the truck a bit. I've put this on incorrectly. Oh. And now... You can't get it apart. You see, it's jammed up. So what'd you do wrong? Well, there is an out marked on the spacer. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. And if we look very closely on the rusted top hat here, mm -hmm. it says out there right so naturally i assume oh, yeah. yeah yeah we're supposed to line, up. line this up gotcha so the million dollar question is is this spring compressed enough for me to put everything back together and i don't think we're Ooh. gonna make it nope <laughs> well i'm out of, You're out of oh, look at length that on that look at that one it's so crooked 
Oh, yeah. I mean, we got a couple of threads there. Rusty threads, but yeah, threads are, I think I see threads. Now you do have to be careful here because you can shear that it? thread yeah. off. Yeah. So don't go crazy. Just be gentle. I think we're gonna call that a uh, job done. Now I'm gonna, once again, risk my life to take the <laughs> spray compressors yeah. off here. That's right, stand back. Oh, there we go. It's some elastic Chinese steel. <laughs> it's, it's actually not as tweaked as uh, yeah. we expected, but it's still tweaked. Yeah. So do we want to bother showing people this going back in? I think we can just... Uh, I think we'll skip this. It's let's just cut to the truck on the ground and we can Four show bolts you the, up top. Yeah. Two bolts in the bottom. Have at it. That back on the, the upper control arm here. We're done. There you have it. Spacer installed. So now we can uh, install our wheel and tire, drop the truck on the ground, and uh, see how the wheel well gap looks. I've been told by reputable sources that one inch can make a big difference. So let's find out, Peter. I don't know. I don't know if the girls would say that. <laughs> well, that is uh, just over 37 inches, and we were at 36 before, so we went up one inch. The back. And you can actually tell. You can tell, it makes a visual difference, doesn't it? Now, if the front comes up oh. an inch, is that going to bring the back down a bit? Ooh, that is the million dollar question. Uh -huh. Let's find out. Nah, it's the same. <laughs> Still at 39. Well, it might have come down up an eighth of an inch or something. So we are Not at... enough for us to care. No. So it still has a two inch rake, but it's a lot more subtle of a rake than it used to be. Visually, just standing here looking at the truck, it looks proper now, I find. It doesn't look like it's got that bulldog stance anymore it's got a nice sort of flat no, I totally to agree it, so. it actually does look flat yeah for a very simple install and a, and a cheap install at that I think it's uh, money well spent if you want your truck to look a little more level so let's jump inside and do an even easier job by installing our edge digital monitor and display as you can see we've plugged in our edge CTS2 unit CTS2 I think that stands for color touch screen 2 Obviously its main function is to work as a multi-gauge display. So you can monitor what's going on with your truck while you're towing or, you know, driving through the Rockies or doing anything that might be out of the, the ordinary and you want to see what's up. It has a very intu intuitive interface too, I find. There's just a little arrow at the bottom that gets you out of gauge mode that just takes you out to this menu mode here. So you can see we've got performance settings. So if we go in there, this menu option is not available for your vehicle. That's to tune the ECU. Uh, we don't have that version. That's called the, uh, gosh, I forget the name of the model, but there's a model where you can tune the ECU and display what you're doing through this, this unit as well. So let's get out of there. You can data log and scan engine codes. So you throw a check engine light. This thing will tell you what it's about. And you can also data log for up to 10 minutes, five channels up to 10 minutes. Uh, you can also see here that it will do some performance testing. So it'll do like zero to 100 kilometer hour or zero to 60 mile per hour testing. It actually has um, GPS and uh, yaw sensors in it. So it, it, it's actually a pretty high performance um, data collection unit for you know performance type data. If you put it in mileage coach mode, it'll actually tell you, you know, when you're cruising, what throttle position to be at for best mile, mile per gallon, basically. So it'll teach you how to get uh, better gas mileage. It's which, like having a Prius inside of a Tundra. It is. Pretty neat unit. It's around 400 bucks, so it's not cheap, but for how powerful it is, it's, uh, I think, still good value. I mean, uh, you know, a scan tool, a data collection tool, a data logger, a gauge display, all in one unit for 400 bucks, I think is actually good value. So we It also has a, a auxiliary output, right, for, or, or an input, I should say, for other sensors. Oh, it does, and it has this output for a backup camera. So had I not bought this OE backup camera setup, we could have ordered their backup camera setup and used this nicer, larger display, <laughs> five inch versus two inch display for a backup oh, camera. Oh well. So I shot myself in the foot there. But yeah, you're right, it also has this standable accessory system. So you can daisy chain up to eight sensors together on this. So they literally stack on here and then plug into the main wire. So if we want like boost pressure or, 
oil pressure, that kind of stuff. Wideband, AFR. Yeah. That's a wrap on this episode on the Toyota Tundra. Stay tuned for more Tundra tuning in the future and uh, be, for, be sure to go check out our Shopify page for these sweet hoodies, chapeaus, all kinds of good stuff. We've got some new stickers that our very own PT design that look pretty sweet. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, do all that youtube -y stuff. We are called Speed Academy, so time for a zero to 60 test. Let's do this, PT. Oh, listen to that intake. Woo! Give me a time. Test complete, it says. What's it gonna, what's it gonna say? Time in seconds, eight seconds? That's pretty good. Zero to 60 in eight seconds? Well. That's pretty good for a big old truck. <laughs>